Welcome to the spot welding basics video about squeeze type resistance spot welding. We're going to jump right in here and look at the tips on this welder. The first thing you should do when you look at the welder before you use it is cleaning these tips. So here I have a manual tip cleaner that I can use to clean both ends of the tips. I also can use sandpaper to clean the tips. Make sure if you are cleaning the tips and sanding them, we do not reshape the tip. The shape is very important to maintain. Also, if you have a machine that's water cooled, if you remove too much material, water could come out of those tips unintentionally during the welding process. Lastly, outside of using a sandpaper or the manual tip cleaner, we can go and use the tip dressing tool in the drill as seen here. Here we can see two properly dressed tips with the correct shape put back into them. Before welding any metal with the spot welder, make sure that you measure the thickness of it. And here I am using some digital calipers in millimeters. I'm using millimeters because that is what most machines tend to use for the welder setup. I'm measuring the metal in several places because the thickness may vary or there may be some burrs on the edge of the panel that throw my measurement off. So make sure that you are accurate. I've also cleaned the metal on all the mating surfaces and exterior surfaces where the welder will touch the panel. And that is to make sure we have clean contact. I'm holding them in place with shunting pliers and this is going to set up my welder for a destructive test. I will not discuss welder setup in this video. You should have proper training on the equipment that you are using. But I did set this welder up to the appropriate thickness for this metal and I'm now proceeding with the destructive test. And you'll see that I am wearing a face shield for the weld. To test your spot weld, you can do a twist test as seen in the vise. We then take the panel and go to the nugget that is pulled out and measure the size of the nugget. This piece of plastic is from ICAR and depicts the correct sizes. We can also use the calipers to measure the nugget as a width of approximately five millimeters in diameter. Once you've passed the destructive test, you can continue with your welds. If you fail the destructive test, readjust your welder until you do achieve a weld that does pass the test. Here I'm doing multiple welds on this panel and you can go fairly quick between welds provided the machine has a few moments to cool. If you do a lot of welds continuously, your machine may overheat or may put excessive amounts of heat into the weld. Note that the tips on the welder will get hotter as you go, which can affect your weld. If you do have to weld different types of metal or different thicknesses, you may need to readjust your welder or set it up for those parameters. Some machines are auto setting. And again, you'll have to have proper training on your equipment to adjust the welder as needed. So in here, we're seeing some good welds and some bad welds. One thing to note is as I'm welding, there should be little to no sparks shooting out. Because there's no filler material, any sparks are metal that is being removed from the weld area. These are generally good welds, but there is some differences in the heat effect zone around them. You can see here I'm equalizing this cartridge of panel bond adhesive. See how it came out unevenly first. That is a very important step when using this type of cartridge. Then what we do is purge by squeezing out some material about the length of the tip. That ensures that material is properly mixed before applying to the panel. Now what I'm going to do is apply panel bond adhesive to both mating flanges on this panel. And the purpose of this is for the weld bonding procedure, meaning that we will resistant spot weld through panel bond adhesive. You cannot MIG weld through this material, so this is only used for resistant spot welding. As you can see, I'm laying some material down and covering all the bare metal areas first. You can use an acid brush as seen here, a finger or a spreader. The point is we want to create a primer coat of adhesive to cover all the bare metal to make sure that we have maximum corrosion resistance into the panel. When we are using panel bond adhesive for squeeze type resistant spot welding with the panel bond, so again, weld bonding is the proper term, you may want to put a small bead in between the panels. We want to make sure there is a minimal amount of squeeze out after the panel has been clamped together and welded. Next, you'll see that I am using a seam sealer in here. This is a very specific approved seam sealer that can be welded through as well. And that is an OEM procedure used by many manufacturers. That is called weld sealing, very similar to weld bonding. 
Now the difference of course here is we're welding through seam sealer instead of panel bond. It will give us very similar NVH protection, meaning noise, vibration, and harshness resistance. Uh, however, it doesn't add as much strength. So manufacturers may choose to use this procedure in certain areas of the vehicle where they do not want excessive amounts of strength built up. And that could be weaker areas that they do want to fail, potentially, uh, in the sense of collision repair. So these could be used in areas where the manufacturer wants more energy to be absorbed by the panel. In any case, always follow OEM procedures and guidelines for the adhesive you're using. When performing the weld bonding and weld sealing processes, you may notice a slight difference in your welder setup. You may need the heat or temperature or time increased. So your machine may have a setting specifically for these parameters. In any case, always do a destructive test. If you are doing weld bonding or weld sealing, your destructive test must include the particular adhesive that you are using. You'll also notice that there may be a little bit of smoke or slightly more sparking with this process, but if you have excess sparking, there's probably a problem with your welding process. Here we can see the squeeze out from the two materials that we welded through. There shouldn't be any gaps as you can see right now in the left side. But if you see by the right weld there, there is ample squeeze out. Speaking of squeeze out, you'll probably notice that you may get some material on your machine or equipment or tools that you're using. Try to clean any of that adhesive off right away. And if you need to, clean between welds because it could contaminate your next weld. Spot welders are fairly smart and will let you know if a weld has failed. As you can see in here in this example, if you notice the screen, it tells us wrong spot, meaning it did not weld. Only use weld through primer when the manufacturer calls for it. Some manufacturers do not want weld through primer used. Never plug or MIG weld anywhere near glues or adhesives. Leave at least one inch of space. Here, the welder is set too high. You'll see lots of sparking from the excessive heat, which has created a weld that is way too hot. Notice the coloring on that weld. Most machines come with different attachments to help when accessing hard to reach areas on the vehicle. Follow the procedures for your machine as you may need to set the machine up a little differently for each of these attachments. Now that we're done, make sure you always follow OEM procedures for the vehicle. You follow the TDS sheets for any adhesives or other products you may be using or welding through. And make sure that you have the proper training on the equipment that you're using in your shop.